Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial is part of a beginner CSS series. I'll be using the Chrome web browser, the Visual Studio Code editor, and the live server extension for Visual Studio Code to view the web page. There are links to these tools, starter code files, and all resources in the description below. Let's move on to CSS media queries. Media queries allow you to modify your site based on specific characteristics and parameters, and most often we look at the browser viewport width. This is key to responsive design as our web pages will respond to the width of a device viewport. So let's look at the starter code. I have got some basic HTML here, and I have a page outline that has a header, a nav inside the header element, a main element and a footer element. And so we're just going to outline a page and see how it changes based on viewport changes. And then in the CSS, I've got some basic CSS here. We're importing the Nanito font from Google. Other than that, we have the basic CSS reset and a basic style. A change you may notice is I'm using the font shorthand property now that sets both the font size and the font family all in one right here in the body. Other than that, min height of 100 viewport units. Okay, before we do anything with CSS, we really need to look at the HTML. There is a meta tag here that enables responsive design, and that meta tag has the name viewport. And you can see the content is width equals device width, and then initial scale of 1.0. This is necessary to enable our media queries and allow responsive design in our web pages. Now, do you have to memorize how to type that out? Not really, because VS Code helps us a lot. I'm going to just select everything quickly with Control A, cut it out of the page with Control X, so I have a blank HTML page. And now in VS Code, if I type an exclamation mark, you can see it says Emmet abbreviation. When I press Tab, it fills out the basic skeleton of an HTML page. And you can see it includes this meta tag with the name viewport, the content with width equal to device width, and the initial scale set to 1.0. It's very important to have that as we work with responsive design, and Visual Studio Code helps you do that. I'm going to press Control A now to select all of this, and then Control V to paste over and just go back to the page outline that I already had with the header, nav, main, and footer. Control S to save, and we're ready to move on to the CSS. Okay, before we add any actual CSS to what we already have, let's just talk about the syntax of a media query first. So I'm going to paste this in and look at the syntax, that is how we write it. So we start out with at media, and then we give the media type, and then we specify a condition or conditions as we can link those with logical operators and and or, and then we specify a breakpoint, and that depends on the condition as what type of breakpoint we'll use. There's lots of different types of breakpoints and conditions we can apply. And then just like we do with anything else, we put the CSS rules between the curly braces. So now that we've looked at that syntax, let's go ahead and write a media query and see how that applies. So we can start out with at media, and instead of media type here, we could say, screen. That is the most common one you'll see. You might also see all or print or even speech for screen readers and devices that read the screen back to you. And then after condition or as the condition I should say, you often see min width and you should read min width as starting from. So whatever the width we specify is, these styles will start from that width when we say min width. Likewise, max width would be up to, so the styles would apply up to the width we would provide if we said max width there. We usually do this with min width, and that is because we design from the smallest to the largest, and that is what is called mobile first design, and responsive design. And the reason we do that is, well, think about it this way, as an analogy, when you get a box, you unpack something, it's often hard to put everything back in the box the way it was packed and get the lid to close. It's kind of like that when we design a page. It's easier to start with the smallest and work our way towards the largest rather than start with the largest and then try to squeeze everything into a smaller and smaller box, if you will. So that's kind of the analogy I use to explain that. So we'll start out with a mobile device screen. Usually that's a one column design and we can spread things out as we go. So for this first min width, 
for the breakpoint, let's say I would put, and remember this is starting from, so I would put something like, oh, let's go with 481 pixels. So all of our styles before this media query would be applied until we got to 481 pixels. And then they would still be applied unless we were to overwrite them because the cascade still works. So here we could change something maybe about the body, maybe the font, maybe a background color. And that's what we'll experiment with today because it's so easy to see those background color changes. And then we can overwrite the previous style we had. Other styles, if we do not overwrite those, they will still apply if they were applied before the media query. Now, as always, I'll give a link to the MDN references in the description below, but let's talk about some of the other conditions and breakpoints we could have. Although, as I've said, min width and max width with pixels as a breakpoint is very common, but you could also have something like orientation and then you would set that to uh, possibly landscape, which would be kind of turning your phone to the horizontal instead of the vertical orientation, something like that. There's also something like min-aspect-ratio. And there you can actually set a ratio. And there are many different sizes of phone. So while landscape would actually apply to anything that was wider than it was tall, here we could set something more like specific, like 16 by nine or say seven by four, something like that. Then when the aspect ratio reached that size, so the width would be seven and the height would be four in that ratio or 16 by nine or whatever we put, that is when that would apply. Now remember, we can also put more than one rule here and we'll look at that very soon as well. So how do we decide what breakpoints to apply and what values to use? Well, there are some common ones and we can also look at some CSS frameworks and see what they have applied because they have probably researched that and worked with it a little bit more than we have. So let's look at what some others have done. I'm going to open up the file tree here. You can see I have a notes MD that I'm going to include in this repository. .md means markdown, so it's a markdown file. When I click on this, you'll see the outline here, but I'm using an extension, and if you want to get that extension, it's called markdown all in one. You can search for that in the Visual Studio Code extensions area, and then you can install it if you want to use that as well. So when you have markdown all in one, then you can go ahead and preview the markdown. And that's what I'm going to do with Control, Shift, and the letter V. And now I've got a markdown preview. And this is how GitHub would read our markdown. So I've provided a table here. So some common media query breakpoints. You can see mobile devices are often considered to be 481 pixels width or less. And then from 481 to 768, usually iPads, tablets, 769 to 1024, small screens and laptops, 1025 to 1200, desktops and large screens, and 1201 and greater extra large screens and TVs. Now that's just kind of a common general guideline. Of course, there are no standards, so you can set these how you want, but let's look at what the Bootstrap CSS framework does. And I tend to like these, and I'm, I guess maybe I'm just used to these, but 576 instead of 481, as we saw referenced above, is considered extra small. And then anything greater than 576 is small. 768 and above is medium. 992 is large, 1200 is extra large, and then they have a second extra large, which is double XL at 1400. Now Tailwind is another CSS framework that is very popular now in recent times. And you can see they've also differed somewhat. They consider the extra small to be less than 640. Maybe that's because in recent years, our devices have seemed to have grown into larger sizes. After that, 640 and above is small. Now we meet up and agree at 768, and that is where the iPad is usually at, the traditional iPad. And then 
we've got 1024 here, which is a little different than 992 as far as bootstrap was concerned, then 1280 and 1536. So you can see even professional opinions vary. And you can set your breakpoints how you want to as your page needs to respond. So it can respond to the content. You can work with your content and set the breakpoints according to that. You could target specific devices or just use some general guidelines as well. Let's go back to the CSS now and start to write some code and we'll see how this applies. Okay, I'm going to drag Visual Studio Code to the left and we can see our page on the right. It currently has very little applied as far as styles, just our CSS reset and our basic body styles right here. And then we have our media query. I'm going to hide the file tree with control B so we have a little more room to write code. I'll go ahead and remove this media query for now just so we can start out with our basic page first. And remember we're designing for the smallest screen first and we'll work our way up. So we'll just put in some basic styles here. The easiest thing to see as we're learning about media queries is to change the background color. And let's do that by first setting a background color here on the body. I'm going to set it to 475569, kind of a nice grayish color. If we save that, we can see that doesn't highlight our lettering as well, but we'll change this, of course, as we change media queries. And now after that, we can change a little bit about how this displays. So we learned in the last lesson about images. So we'll set background image. And now instead of linear gradient that we learned about before, there's one other one I would like to show, and that's called a radial gradient. And now this starts in the center and works its way out instead of top to bottom, bottom to top, left to right, or right to left, or any direction that we would send a linear gradient. This will always start from the center. I'm going to use white smoke as the first color, and then we'll use that color that we specified as the fallback background color for the second color. And when I save, now you can see it lightens up here in the center and it works its way out to a darker color on the left and the right, top and bottom. Now let's make, well, I'll put a semicolon there. Let's make our body a flex container and then let's set the flex direction and we'll set that to column because row is the default and we want our elements to stack instead of being a row. I'm going to scroll for a little more room and now let's go ahead and identify each piece here. We have a header, a nav, a main and a footer and we will apply this style to all of those elements. So we'll set each one of those to display grid and then we'll center our content by saying place content center. And when we save, now we see that has been saved in the center of each one. So this really means we've stacked our elements and nothing is below. So we want this to take up the full page and we'll take that on here very shortly. So I'll scroll for some more room here on the left and now I'm going to put a style on just the header and the footer. And here we'll say position sticky as we want these at the top and the bottom. Let's identify these with a different background color. And here we'll say 1E293B. There we go, a little darker. But then let's give the font the color of white smoke as well. We can save that and now we can see our header and footer. And remember the nav is nested inside the header. And now we've applied position sticky, but we didn't provide the other value that we need to stick the header or the footer in a spe specific position. So here I'm going to say header now because it will have a different position than the footer. We'll say top zero. And now that is in the same place. But after that, we can come down below and say footer, and here we'll say bottom zero and save. And now, right now, it looks like it's in the same position because we haven't expanded the page, but the footer will be stuck to the bottom and the header will be stuck to the top. And we can see the difference in that. I'll scroll for a little more room. And in our main element, and it is a flex item right now as it's inside the body that is a flex container, we can say flex-grow. Set that to a value of one 
And now the main element has grown to fill out whatever space was available. Now, before we move on to a media query, let's go ahead and style the nav just a little bit more to make it stand out. So let's give it a background dash color, set that equal to white. After that, we'll set its color or font color to black. Let's give it just a little bit of padding here, 0 0.5 rem, and let's give it a border bottom and let's set this a little thicker two pixels solid black and let's see what we get well that looks good except we don't quite have the width we want yet we can easily solve this by going back to where we place the grid on each of these elements the header nav main and footer we've got it centered but we don't have block elements at this point that are 100 percent width so let's add grid dash template columns and set that to 100%. Now when we center those, or actually give them 100% width, and we've centered them, and you can see main is centered here vertically, but it's not horizontally now, but the elements do have 100% width, and this is text, consent, text content, pardon me, so we just need to say text align center, and now we get everything where we want it, but we actually have 100% width for each of those elements once again. And now we have our basic page layout. So let's go ahead and add a media query now that will change things up a little bit. So underneath our footer, we first want to indicate that's what we're doing. So I'll put a comment. And here, let's say small. That's where we'll start out with our media query. I'll say at media, and then we'll use screen. And I'll say min width, and here we'll say 576 pixels. So the styles we have put in are valid up to 576 pixels, and they will still be valid if we do not overwrite them here. So now let's go ahead and style the body here. And the first thing we'll do is set a background dash color. Let's just set it to green, something we'll definitely notice a change on. And then we can go ahead and use that same background image style that we're using with a radial gradient and inside there we'll start out with white smoke once again and then we'll just switch to green okay besides the body let's do one other thing let's take the nav and let's just set the display to none so it will disappear and now look what happened we're already past that 576 width so we see those changes instantly we no longer have a nav on the page, and now our background for the body is main. Now we still have our background color on the header and footer that we set because we did not overwrite those with a new style here. So that is what has changed based on that width. Now how can we go back and forth? This is interesting and something you should learn how to do. So I'll drag this over till it's full screen. You want to go to Dev Tools, and there's certain ways to do that. One is to right click and choose Inspect at the bottom of the pop-up menu. Another is to press Control Shift and the letter I, which is what I tend to do. And now Dev Tools opened here on the right. It's fairly small, and I have got the console here for JavaScript right now, but yours may open to elements and you can see and highlight these elements here. And that's really what we want as we style things and you can see layout. But now let's look at some details about this layout and how we can adjust that. Notice the little mobile devices icon up here. Let's go ahead and click that. It says toggle device toolbar. That gives us more tools. Now we can choose dimensions and we see the dimensions here. We see the percentage that's showing. So I'm going to set this to 100% and now I can see that. These are the dimensions for an iPhone 6, 7, and 8. We can change this to a responsive screen or choose different devices. So I'm using the responsive screen now and I can drag it to make it narrower or wider. And you saw that change. And there we went past our 576. We're now at 602 pixels wide and we can see the change. Likewise, we can look at devices like I was talking about before. So I'll choose iPhone 5 slash SE, one of the smaller devices. Now, not every device has this available, but some do. You can go to the three dots here in our uh, new responsive menu bar that popped up. And here we can say show device frame. 
And now I have a frame that looks like a phone around my page. And now we can once again change that. I wanna make it so I can see the whole phone. So there we go. And now we see how it looks on the phone. You can even change to the horizontal display as you would turn your phone or back to the normal display here. And we can do that for several different phones. I'll choose the iPhone 6, 7, and 8, for example. Or we can just go back to responsive and drag the page around, which is what we'll do now, because now up until 576, and we can even type in here, I can say 576, we're going to switch over. So if I said 575, Yep, we're back to the original background color. So we can check our breakpoints right there. Also, there are breakpoints here that are suggested by Chrome, and you can click on these to change your width as well and see how it displays. And these are a little bit different than what we reviewed in our notes markdown file as well. So you might check those out. Okay, let's drag this back over to the right. And then let's take Visual Studio Code and fill up the page. Let's put in some more breakpoints and then we'll come back and check all of those out. What I'm going to do now is highlight all of this code, then press Shift, Alt, and the down arrow to copy it down. And now let's make our next breakpoint and we'll label this one medium. And we're not going to change the nav anymore. It is gone for now, so we'll just leave it gone. So all we really want to do is change the color here for our next breakpoint and of course the breakpoint value itself. So here I'll switch this to gold. I could have changed those both at the same time. I'll try to remember to do that next time. So min width, instead of 576, this is our medium. Let's set it to 768. We want the pixels behind that to indicate that. After that, let's copy this down again. So Shift, Alt, and the down arrow. And now this would be our large breakpoint. We'll relabel that. I'll highlight gold and press Control D to select the other gold. I'm going to change this to fire brick. And so that will give us a nice color change as well. We'll set this to 992 pixels, much like the Bootstrap framework does. Now let's select our large, Shift, Alt, and the down arrow. I'll give another line break there. And then this will be our XL setting. And for that, let's go ahead and switch to another color that will be noticeable, Rebecca Purple. I didn't select that fire brick. I'll do Control Z to go back to fire brick, highlight the first one, Control D to select the second one, and now Rebecca Purple is what we want. Save that and let's do one more, but this will be different. So I'm going to copy this down, but we'll make some changes. Just to give an example of how you could do something differently and look for a different type of breakpoint as well. So this is still at media screen, but let's go ahead and label this. Here we go, I could type, there we go, mobile. And I want that all caps, mobile device landscape. So now let's combine some things here. Instead of min width, let's say lowercase max height. And we'll set the max height to 425 pixels. And after that, let's do another and. And now let's say min aspect ratio. You might have thought I would have said orientation, but I want to actually be a little more specific here and say the min aspect ratio of seven to four. So it's noticeably taller than it is wide. And let's change our Rebecca purple to Dodger blue and save that as well. Now inside of this, we'll also do a couple of other changes. So let's say H1 and H2 that we have for labels. We'll Make the font size just a little smaller to 1.5 rim. And then let's also set that nav to display none. And we need to do that again because we didn't hit our other min width when we hit our max height here. So that's a little different, but we'd just be looking at a different size. So we need to go ahead and switch that to display none, or I believe it would show once again. So now that we've made those changes, Let's drag Visual Studio Code over and see if they all take place in our page. So we'll drag Chrome back over. We'll start down here at the smallest, and there we have our original color. We get a little wider, we've got green. A little wider yet, we have gold. A little wider yet, we have Rebecca Purple. 
it seems like maybe we skipped over the fire bricks. So let's see what happened there. We'll bring this back over and look at our fire brick and maybe all it takes is one typo to get something wrong. Maybe I did something wrong. And I sure did. I did not change the min width for the Rebecca purple for the XL. So we had 992 here and 992 here again. So this essentially was overriding this. So we wanted to change this 992 here and set it to 1200 pixels. And now we should see all of the changes we expected. And here's purple, there is our fire brick color, gold, green, and back to normal there. So we might see those changes in different devices as well. So let's go ahead and check that. We'll see our iPhone and we can choose maybe a larger setting here. That's too large, let's go with 75%. There's the iPhone. Let's go with the iPad. And yes, it's gold. Let's go with the iPad Pro. Yes, that's the fire brick size. And you can see a device frame is not available for it. And then we could even switch up to say, well, let's go back to a small phone first. There is that iPhone 5 SE. Now let's go ahead and change the orientation. And now we get our Dodger blue color as we switched because the aspect ratio and the max height were both met. It met both, both of those conditions. And now you can see how those media queries apply and we can change the page based on what the device is, the viewing orientation. And of course, you're not going to have someone that typically changes their screen size as they're working with your application. So you don't really need to worry about these smooth transitions in between changes. And that's because nobody will be changing their device or really their screen size as they use the application. So you just need to make sure it appears as you want it to at each separate breakpoint. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.